This video was supported by the Australian Government through its Wildlife Rescue and Rehabilitation Initiative and the Foundation for National Parks and Wildlife. Hello, I'm Dr Bree Talbot, Foundation Vet for the Byron Bay Wildlife Hospital. And today, helping me, we have Nurse Haley. And we're going to be showing you how to assess and treat macropods in your veterinary hospital. Our star today is Lucky the Swamp Wallaby. And he's going to be helping us to show you what to do with these guys. Now it's important when you get a mammal in, especially a macropod, that you get the correct species identification. If this is something that you're not too comfortable with, it's always a great idea to have a chat with your local wildlife service because they can help you identify the macropod species. And this can be particularly hard when they're quite young and unfurred. But we know Lucky is a little swamp wallaby and he's quite the star and he's going to be helping us. With your physical exam with your macropods, it is easiest to do this with them still in the pouch. This helps to keep them safe and secure, but also not to jump around and get too scared from the environment. Please remember to try to do it in a quiet place in your practice, away from dogs and cats, because that can really stress these guys out and can contribute to any stress myopathy that they might already be experiencing. So what we're going to be looking at with these guys is checking their eyes, checking their nose, and we're just going to be getting out certain limbs as we go along to assess them. So we want to check their hydration. So it's a simple skin tenting test like you would in a dog and cat. You want to check their eyes for any corneal ulcers, especially if they have been found on barbed wire. You want to check their mouth if they'll let you. Some joeys can get thrush, so you want to check for um, white plaques that might be on the tongue or the rest of the buccal cavity. Next up, we're going to assess their little paws. Okay, so you just want to make sure that there's good tone, that there's no injuries on there, no palpable swellings that might indicate a fracture or infection. A lot of these guys can experience ringworm or other dermatitis issues, and so you want to check everything nice and thoroughly. And then we're going to go through the pouch, just to go down into their abdomen. You want to palpate the abdomen, also have a listen to it. Um, a lot of your joeys can experience diarrhea um, and stomach upsets, and same type of thing for your dogs and cats. You want to have a good listen to see what the gut sounds are doing. And then we want to get out a hind leg. Now it's really important that if you get a joey in or any animal that has been involved in a motor vehicle accident, that you take an x-ray. Even if this joey was in the pouch of its mother, they can still get fractures that might not be evident on physical examination. So as part of your workup, please take x-rays of all your joeys that come in. Check the cloaca. A lot of these guys will get inflamed cloacas. They can get infections, so always check that to make sure it's nice and clean. So we're checking the feet making sure there's no swelling, checking the cloaca that it's nice and dry and clean. You can also take their body temperature the normal way and checking their tail. A lot of these guys can actually get fractures to their tails and dislocations of the vertebrae. So you wanna check for symmetry as well. We let them calm down and then we continue our physical examination. If your macropod is too stressed or it's too noisy or you want to feel more comfortable with your examination, anaesthetizing your animal might be the better way. But for Lucky today, we're going to keep him awake um, so that we can monitor his demeanor and check how he's investigating the world. What we're going to do now is show you where you can take blood where you can give fluids and the veins that you can use for euthanasia. Now these are the same for most of your domestic animals and most of your mammal species. And these places are going to be your external jugular vein, your cephalic vein, your tail vein, and your medial metatarsal vein. These are gonna be in the same spots as your dogs and cats, um, but they're just gonna be a lot smaller and they can collapse when you do put pressure on them. So you just be mindful of that. With your macropods, Probably the easiest place to try first is the lateral tail vein or your medial metatarsal vein because they're going to be bigger, but they're also easier to do with a conscious animal. You can keep your macropod in his actual blanket and keep him nice and calm as can be. For your tail vein, if you hold the base of the tail, you allow the pressure to build, you'll actually see a faint line going down the side of the vertebrae processes and that 
is your tail vein. One of the most common things that you'll do with your macropod species or any of your marsupials is to give subcutaneous fluids. Now there are two places that you can give this and this will depend on the animal that you're dealing with and any concurrent injuries. But the first place you can give it is behind the neck, between the scapula as you would with your other species or in the side of the flank. So we'll show you that now where you can give that and you can give up to 10% of the body weight in these areas. Remember to always give your fluids at body temperature because this is going to help absorption and decrease the stress of your animal while they're in hospital. The first place to give fluids is between the scapula. So you can see with Lucky, we have a fair bit of subcutaneous tissue that we can give the fluids in. Or the other place that you can give it to them is in their flank. So where the leg meets the body, there is a fair bit of tissue here. And the good thing about this is if it's a high volume that you need to give, you can give half on one side and half on the other side. With your intramuscular injections, the easiest place to give this is going to be either in your semi-membranous or your semi-tendinous muscles. So that's going to be the back of the leg around the glutes. So it is easiest to do it with a conscious animal. You keep them in their pouch and then you just expose that back of the leg. You can give it in there and give it a good massage afterwards. There are several ways that you can weigh your mammals and your macropods when they're in the hospital. The first way is to use your classic dog and cat scales. And we find the easiest way to do this is to actually keep your macropod in their pouch, weigh the pouch with the animal in it, then take the animal out and weigh the pouch separately. The other way that you can weigh them is to use lugging scales. And that's a similar technique where you'll actually hold up the animal in the scales, in the pouch, and then take the difference away from the animal and the pouch. It's really important that whenever you do have a mammal in, especially a macropod, that you do weigh them. And if possible, get a leg measurement because this can help you age the animal, but also determine its prognosis. Next up is taking x-rays. Now, taking an x-ray with a macropod or any marsupial is best done under anesthetic. If that is not available, you can take an x-ray within the bag, but that may not be diagnostic. So if possible, please anaesthetize your animal and then you set them out like you would a dog and cat. So you'll do your VD and then your lateral and then any other views that you may deem necessary. This is especially important if you do have a kangaroo that has been hit by a car, you do want to check for any calcaneal fractures and so you want to get those positions correct and only general anesthesia will give that to you. We've covered a lot today in assessing macropods in the veterinary practice. We really enjoy looking after these guys in the practice and we hope you do too. We are very grateful to the Foundation for National Parks and Wildlife for producing this video. If you have any questions regarding treating our Australian native animals, please do not hesitate to contact the Byron Bay Wildlife Hospital at www.byronbaywildlifehospital.org.